welcome you all uh, to the this uh, second lecture of msc botany for semester in the uh, last lecture uh, you have seen the total course structure or course framework of msc botany at uh, jaipur national university now in this uh, we uh, will be having a look on one of the five theory papers of this particular semester uh, and this particular uh, paper is morphology and diversity of non vascular plants as the name suggests this paper is having uh, fungi in unit 1 and in unit 2 and unit 3 you will be having uh, algae and lichens and in the unit 4 you will be having bryophyta so out of all uh, these uh, non vascular uh, groups of uh, plants uh, that uh, you people will be studying in this particular paper uh, in this particular class we will see about algae now you can uh, see that uh, uh, over the slide that uh fungi are also thallophytic organisms they don't have a vasculature uh for absorption of minerals and water likewise algae are also thalloid organisms and they do not have vasculature and bryophyta are also thalloid organisms they do not have clear distinction uh in uh, roots stem and leaves rather uh, they have uh, uh, thallophytic organization so uh, we would start now uh, with the section algae now in plant sciences whenever we try to study a particular group we must know what are its attributes through which it can be categorized or grouped in this particular class like Uh, if i say algae you must be developing something in your mind that this particular organism may be called as algae or when i say fungi or when i say bryophytes when i say pteridophytes when i say angiosperms when i say gymnosperms so they there are different uh, characteristic features like if you see angiosperms they are flowering plants they must be a, a flower if you see gymnosperm seeds are naked so that is the characteristic uh, feature that is possessed by all the species of that particular group if you see bryophytes they are having uh, uh, habits of growing in water in aquatic environments as well as in land environments that's how uh, they are called as amphibians of the plant kingdom so uh, likewise you can also tell about algae also so when you try to define algae what are the different attributes that you would like to incorporate in algae so these attributes are like you can say these are autotrophic organisms so can you say that all the autotrophic organisms of this world are algae no it's not the case or you can say they are green organisms and they are uh, having chlorophyll so they are not the only class or only group which are having chlorophyll there are many other groups which may possess chlorophyll and then if you say that uh, they have unicellular sex organs no they have multicellular sex organs also so or if you say there is a range of photosynthetic pigments that is also there but there is a clear distinction between algae and plants so even after being classified formally uh, within the group of plants algae are not in true sense plants so and furthermore they are they are a large and heterogeneous assemblage of organisms that means they are 
unicellular they are multicellular also they they may be prokaryotic they may be unicellular uh, um, uh, eukaryotic also so there are uh, different uh, kind of range so there is no such group that exist in this world of uh, biology that possesses such a large heterogeneous assemblage when i say heterogeneous means there are certain uh, organisms in algae which possess completely different characteristics there are certain other organisms which possess completely different characteristics and some organisms are prokaryote some organisms are uh, eukaryotes some are unicellular some are multicellular some are uh, unicellular multinucleate some are multicellular multinucleate some are unicellular uninucleate so there is a range of uh, diversity so that's how uh, when we would go for defining algae uh, you you must uh, include all the important attributes uh, with the help of which algae as a group can be characterized so here we go and we would uh, see the definition of uh, algae it is a large heterogeneous assemblage of largely aquatic when i say largely aquatic that means not necessarily all algal organisms are aquatic so most of them are aquatic but some of them may also be found on soil they are largely autotrophic as well most of the algae are autotrophic they are capable of synthesizing their own food but there are certain other organisms which may enter into symbiotic relationship which may also have mixotrophic mode of nutrition so a large heterogeneous assemblage of largely aquatic autotrophic organisms that fail to show any tissue differentiation and that fail to show any tissue differentiation is related with uh, the thalloid organization so it is having a body vegetative body which is not differentiated into stem roots leaves and all these structures but they are capable of absorbing water and minerals throughout their body surface and they are not having any vascular system they have unicellular sex organs and if the sex organs are multicellular all the cells of the uh, gam gametangia will be fertile means whenever if you want to compare it you can you can compare it with the sex organ or you can say anthridium or archegonium of bryophyta so in bryophyta what you find that the outermost jacket cells or the cells in the outermost jacket they do not undergo meiosis or uh, a division which may release uh, the gametes so here in the case of uh, algae even if the sex organs are multicellular all the cells will be fertile means they all will be entering into uh, uh, reduction division or meiotic division and this particular group algae presents a spectrum of photosynthetic pigments they have uh, xanthophylls they have carotenoids they have uh, phycocyanin they have uh, phycoerythrin uh, they have range of chlorophyll chlorophyll a chlorophyll b chlorophyll c chlorophyll d they have a range of chlorophyll and they all of them essentially possess a chlorophyll chlorophyll a and lastly which is the most important part they are a kind of autotrophic organisms which evolve oxygen during photosynthesis so these are the defining attributes of algae again i will uh, read out uh, it for you it is a large heterogeneous assemblage of largely aquatic autotrophic organisms that fail to show any tissue differentiation and capable of absorbing water and minerals with the whole body surface that means they do not have a vascular system 
they have unicellular sex organs and if multicellular all cells are fertile and which presents a spectrum of photosynthetic pigments along with chlorophyll A evolving oxygen during photosynthesis. Now, uh, after having this much uh, outlook or overview of how algae can be characterized, uh, we would go to find what are the different cell types that are found in algae. After seeing the different type of cell types, we would go to understand what is the range of thallus structure. So here we go. So in algae, we find two basic cell types. They may be either prokaryotic and they may be eukaryotic. Cyanophyce or cyanobacteria or blue-green algae is a group which is having prokaryotic organization. All other algal groups ranging from rhodophyta and then chlorophyta and then xanthophyta, pheophyta, chrysophyta, dinophyta, bacillariophyta, they all are having eukaryotic cellular organization. So what happens in a prokaryotic organization? There is no nucleus. So they do not possess a membrane bound nucleus. So no nuclear region and complex organelles like membrane bound organelles also they do not possess like chloroplast, mitochondria, Golgi bodies, endoplasmic reticulum. In cyanobacteria Chlorophylls are on internal membranes of flattened vesicles called thylakoids and they contain photosynthetic pigments. So here you can see uh, the thylakoids. Here, here these are thylakoids and in thylakoids chlorophyll is present and on the surface of these thylakoids phycobilisomes are formed. So phycobilly proteins occur in granular structures that is called as phycobilly somes. Now when it comes to the eukaryotic cellular organization in algae uh, which may be unicellular or which may be multicellular as well. Uh, you uh, will be having uh, distinct uh, plastids or membrane bound other organelles like uh, endoplasmic reticulum, mitochondria and uh, all other organelles which are a characteristic of a eukaryotic cell and furthermore a unit membrane bound nucleus. Here in the eukaryotic cellular organization in algae, thylakoids are grouped into grana. So whereas in prokaryotic organization, thylakoids were like flattened vesicles here, thylakoids are grouped into grana. Then they have certain special structures like uh, they have pyrenoids, they have uh, uh, ejectosomes, they have uh, many other structures like uh, uh, eye spot or stigma. So they have many structures which we will see uh, later on in this particular class. So, uh, pyrenoids are centers of carbon dioxide fixation within the chloroplast. So, they, they are themselves not membrane bound. They are special structures. They are not membrane bound. Rather, they are traversed in the chloroplast. So, they are traversed within the chloroplast of algae as well as uh, they are also found in some liver bird, sorry, horn birds. So, uh, pyrenoids are not membrane bound organelles. They are specialized areas of the plastid that contain very high level of rubesco, that is ribulose 1,5-bisphosphate carboxylase. So, here one example of uh, what you can see uh, uh, Clamidomonas has been shown. Here you can see that this is the chloroplast. Here you can also see that 
thylakoids are arranged in grana and uh, then uh, there are uh, starch grains and this is pyrenoid this is pyrenoid and then you have uh, cell wall uh, and then this is the flagella and rest is cytoplasm here is the membrane bound nucleus nucleus is also having nucleolus which is a characteristic feature of uh, eukaryotes now after having an idea of uh, uh, the cellular types that are found in algae now we would move on to uh, thallus organization in algae but before going for thallus organization in algae we must understand what is a thallus so a thallus is an undifferentiated vegetative body in which there is no differentiation in roots stems or leaves so there is no differentiation of tissues into organs so water and minerals can be absorbed throughout the body surface and a thallus may be very small very tiny it may be unicellular like you have seen uh, just in the prior slide uh, in chlamydomonas so although a thallus is largely undifferentiated in terms of its anatomy there can be visible differences sometimes in larger thallus structures at least you can differentiate that this is the anterior side this is the posterior side this is the dorsal side this is the ventral side or you would see a range of thallus organization that is found in algae in some of the groups of algae large very large thallus are found spread across hundreds of meters 200 of meters so that is still a thallus so that type of thallus is called as kelp and usually it is seen that in a kelp thallus may be divided into three distinct zones or regions the parts of the kelp thallus include the hold fast hold fast is a kind of a structure that uh, helps it to uh, attach to a substratum and then it has a stipe a stipe supports the blades and it has the blades so hold fast stipe and the blades so blades are chiefly the photosynthetic organ in kelps so kelp may be very big or the thallus may be unicellular or very tiny or microscopic object in uh, algae as well and there are two types of thallus or there are two forms of algal thallus it may be unicellular or it may be multicellular just in the previous slide you have seen chlamydomonas that is a unicellular thallus and uh, then you may uh, get a range of multicellular thallus and within multicellular thallus uh, you you may also get uh, they may be uninucleate they may be multinucleate such kind of conditions are also there so in unicellular algae growth in size that constitutes the vegetative phase and increasing cell number constitutes the reproductive phase so when a chlamydomonas grows from small to relatively bigger size that is the vegetative growth in the chlamydomonas thallus which is a unicellular thallus but when chlamydomonas divides and increases its number it is reproductive phase in multicellular thallus both the vegetative and reproductive phases may involve cell division as well as growth so uh, multicellular phases are characterized by cell division as well as growth in both the reproductive as well as in vegetative phase now we would uh, now uh, see what are the unicellular thallus range in algae here i would tell you uh one exception of algal thallus uh one uh, rather one group which is not having 
any unicellular organism or any unicellular form and that particular uh, phylum is Pheophyta. So Pheophyta is a group which does not have any unicellular form. So see this this is the reason why I was telling that it is a large and heterogeneous assemblage of different life forms. Now in unicellular thallus it may be motile means they may be moving by its own or uh, they may be non-motile also and again when they are motile this motility is of two kinds the flagellated ones or this motility may be due to rhizopodia so here uh, the flagellated ones are found in all the phyla of algae except rhodophyta as well as in cynophyta so except these two groups Rhodophyta and Sinophyta, all other algal groups have flagellated stages either at in the vegetative body or in the reproductive phase. And second unicellular types may be rhizo may be due to rhizopodia. So these rhizopodial ones are found in xanthophyce and some other all algae as well. Like in Chrysophyta, they are also seen. So here uh, I am showing you one uh, example of a flagellated unicellular thallus that is Chlamydomonas. Here you can see that uh, this is uh, a unicellular alga which is having a flagella and uh, uh, this is motile uh, in, in the water stream. It can move according to its needs. And uh, here uh, I am giving you an uh, example of uh, rhizopodial ones like uh, rhizocrisis. And uh, the flagellated forms may be periplastic. Periplastic means uh, they may change their shape. Here, like in Euglena, you can see that there is no definite cell wall. So because of uh, absence of definite cell wall, uh, they continuously change their shape. They may be oblong, they may be circular, or they, they, they uh, may be half oblong, or uh, they uh, can... Uh, observe uh, they, they can have different type of shapes but in Chlamydomonas there is a firm cell wall here you can see that there is a firm cell wall so they, they cannot change their shape of course they can enter the growth phase but they cannot change their shape so uh, in Chlamydomonas the flagellated forms are with a definite cell wall and in Euglena they are periplastic so external to periplast, sometimes some flagellates have a special envelope with pores. Here in the case of Phacotus, you can see that uh, this is the organism and which is having two flagella and uh, this is the cell. Now apart from this cell, there is a special envelope. Okay, And this special envelope uh, encircles the cell. And it has a pore here through which uh, the flagella comes out. This is the uh, top view and this is the lateral view of Phacotus. Now, up to now we have seen the motile forms of unicellular thallus. Now we would see the non-motile forms. There are several groups of algae which possess uh, non-motile forms of thallus which are not having any kind of motility and uh, a very good example is chlorella chlorella is from uh, chlorophyta so uh, here here you can see chlorella this is chlorella and this is a unicellular thallus uh, but uh, it does not possess anything uh, which may help it in the locomotion uh, and then uh, this is navicula uh, and this is cyclotella these two are bacillariophytes and then this is uh, spirulina it is a cynophycian algae so in spirulina cell is elongated into a helical filament so uh, all other uh, these are these are called as coxoid form like chlorella is a coxoid form this this cyclotella is a coxoid form but this spirulina is an elongated form. This is also non-motile. 
Now, after seeing uh, this uh, unicellular uh, thallus range, now we would come to multicellular thallus. If you see the algae as a whole that uh, I understand that you must have gone through in your undergrad class, uh, you must have seen several different type of thallus. Here I am, I am just providing you an overview of different uh, kind of thallus and after uh, having this overview we will uh, in the next classes we will go for uh, having an account of uh, different groups individually like we would go for chlorophyta, we would go for pheophyta, we would go for bacillariophyta, we would go for cyanophyta like that. So in multicellular habit or forms of algae depending on the manner in which cells are produced and arranged uh, during the vegetative phase three principal types may be categorized and these principal types are colonial forms and then filamentous forms and then siphonaceous forms. So within the colonial types also there are different types. Within the filamentous also there are different types and within the siphonaceous also there are different types. We will go through them one by one. So in the colonial forms uh, cells are coming together and they are forming a colony like structure. Colony-like structure means uh, they, they tend to remain together. So it is an assemblage of independently existing cells. So assemblage of individual cells with variable or constant number of cells. Remember, here I am telling that colony is an assemblage of individual cells having varying or constant number of cells. When the number is constant, then it is classified as a different colonial type. When the number is varying, then it may be classified as different uh, type of thallus. Uh, we would see them. So, these cells come together because the individual cells secrete mucilaginous substance into their surroundings and these cells get embedded in the mucilaginous matrix and that's how a colony is formed. So this mucilaginous matrix contains an extracellular uh, material made of gelatinous polysaccharides. These colonies may be motile like uh, volvox. Here you can see volvox. So here uh, you can observe that uh, this is a parent colony and within this these are the daughter colonies and within this daughter colony the next colony is again arising and uh, they they may be non motile also so uh, a colonial form may be non motile also so there are four uh, main types uh, of colonial forms that exist these are synovial palmaloid dendroid and rhizopodial so when uh, in the colonial form, uh, if you see the motile form, this motile motility is is due to either either due to uh, the flagella uh, that is possessed by individual cells, like in the case of volvox uh, that you are uh, seeing here, and or it may be due to rhizopodia sometimes. So in uh, Non-motile forms like in St. Desmus or Pediastrum, uh, this motility is not present because uh, no flagella or rhizopodia kind of a structure is found. But these uh, non-motile forms remain in a colonial form. So we would go to the first form uh, that is synobium. So the question arises how can we uh, know that this is a synobium. Why do we call it as a synobium? So a synobium has a definite number of cells. So when the number of cells in a particular colony remain constant throughout the vegetative phase then it is called as a synobium. And cells are arranged in a manner which is determined at the juvenile phase. Juvenile phase means 
uh, a phase which is not mature which is still subject to environmental conditions and they may go to perish so uh, this this cell number determination may occur at the juvenile phase whatever cell number is determined at the juvenile phase in the total vegetative body that cell number will remain constant so this cell number will not increase during its subsequent growth phase even though cells may enlarge and again i am telling you that that will constitute the vegetative phase a synobium may be motile cells are flagellated like you are uh, able to see in uh, wall box uh, the cells are uh, flagellated so this colony is motile with the help of these flagella that is possessed by individual cells the colony may move from here to there or they may be non motile also so in non motile forms cells are coxoid and more or less fused together like here you can see that individual different cells are fused together so they are not motile uh, this example is of hydrodictyon so these are original images of uh, the these thallus forms and then we will move on uh, to other different types so in synobium you have seen that uh, the the cell number of a particular colony remain constant throughout the vegetative phase then you say it as synobium in other cell types cell number does not remain constant so in palmoid in dendroid or in rhizopodial forms let us see Uh, now what what is palmoid form vegeta in palmoid form vegetative cells are non motile so at during the vegetative phase cells are non motile and remain embedded in a mucilaginous matrix of irregular shape and size like here you can see in aphanotes they become motile during reproduction so in palmoid form of colony cells remain non motile at the time of vegetative growth but at the time of reproduction they may become motile the matrix of any palmoid colony here the matrix is formed from the walls of individual daughter cells which gelatinize and mix together in the common matrix examples are aphanotes and here in the tetraspora you are able to see that there are four uh, uh, individual cells that tend to remain together so that's how it is called as tetraspora it appears that four spores are remaining together in aphanotes uh, cells are arranged in a haphazard manner and uh, they remain embedded in the common matrix common matrix is present here also and then the third colonial form that is dendroid in the dendroid form uh, it appears that this is a branching tree habit so cells are united in a branching manner by localized production of mucilage at the base of each cell so each cell base so here here it will be localized production of mucilage here it will be localized production of mucilage here it will be localized production of mucilage here localized production of mucilage and because of this localized production and its ray like structure when you see the colony it 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 uh, appears that it is a branching tree like habit so whole colony looks like a tree in habit example is chrysodendron or dinobryon so these two are examples other examples are also there here i am showing you dinobryon and then in rhizopodial forms the cells are united through rhizopodia so when rhizopodia is present uh, they uh, will be motile so here in crazy diastrum you can see that cells are united this is the individual cell and here you can see that uh, the cells are uh, united uh, to each other uh, through rhizopodia here another example chlorarachnion is there chlorarachnion is another example of uh, rhizopodia so 
these are the different colonial forms. So I have told you in the colonial form, uh, I have told you regarding synobium, I have told you regarding palmyloid habit, and then I have told you dendroid habit, and then I have told you rhizopodial uh, habits. In synobium, you have seen it uh, may be non-motile, it may be motile. In the uh, motile category, uh, you have seen wall box. In the non-motile category, you have seen sandesmus. In uh, So, I have uh, today told you uh, regarding uh, the colonial uh, thallus range. In colonial thallus range, I have told you uh, regarding uh, synobium. Then in palmyloid, in palmyloid uh, uh, cells are non-motile in the vegetative phase and they may be motile in the reproductive phase and then uh, in uh, dendroid uh, because of the localized production of mucilage at the base uh, you get a tree-like habit, branching tree-like habit and then in rhizopodial form cells are united uh, with the help of rhizopodia. So, this was all for today. In the next class, we would see the filamentous forms, filamentous thallus range and uh, then uh, we will see the siphonaceous forms. So, that was all for today. Thanks a lot. Thank you.